Hello happy souls, welcome back to my channel. This is Charlotte with Happy Twins 1111 and I'm so excited to bring you today as well, Kay Moon. Hey Kay. Hey, it's such a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's ages since we've done a collab and we've been talking about how rough the energies are right now. Um, after doing loads of face-to-face -face appointments in the last couple of weeks, it's really been apparent that this is a really collective thing and following the, the energy of the, the Facebook networking group as well. So Kay and I thought we'd come together and have a look at what's actually going on here. And more importantly, what do we need to do with those, these energies? Because they're, they're, they're here for a reason. You know, they're always purposeful. So I'm really interested today to look at what do we need to learn from the, these really difficult energies, this rough ride that we're having, what, what's it doing for us and how can we move through it with more grace? So Kay's going to look at the astrology and I've pulled some cards and we're going to figure this stuff out for you guys. What are you saying, Kay? I'm into it. I think it would be really useful right now. Because it has been so heavy, hasn't it? Are you finding the same with your own client base? Yeah. Um, not only has it been really heavy, but I think, you know, the there's a real dissonance between what we're all experiencing and then what we're seeing out and being fed back from, you know, the media and, you know, mass consciousness, you know, there's such, the dissonance is what's causing a lot of the suffering, mm. the discrepancy between the two. And so, you know, I think if we can really break down, okay, here's what the energy, here's why it feels like such a pressure cooker. And here's what we are invited to do with that so that we can rise through it. I think that would be really helpful. Perfect. Well, do you want to go first with the astrology? I'm really keen to see what the stars are saying. I can totally. Um, all right. Let me quickly share the screen. So I've pulled up two lunation charts for us to reflect on as we look at this. I pulled up the new moon in Pisces energy that happened back in February on the 23rd. Um, if you, uh, yeah, on February 23rd. And then I pulled up the full moon in Aries because that was the most recent full moon energy, lunation energy, and that was on October 1st, 2020. Now, there is some energy here um, where that's the same, same energies in both charts. And that's this energy here in Capricorn. We've got Saturn, we've got Pluto, and we've got Jupiter in each chart pretty much almost at the same degrees, sitting between kind of 17, 18 degrees Capricorn all the way up to 25, 27 degrees Capricorn. But these last 10 degrees of Capricorn are where we're learning how to um, work with structure and implementation. However, the energies here are the exact opposite of building they're actually deconstructing so saturn likes to deconstruct via looking at what's not in our highest good and removing it pluto likes to deconstruct by removing what's dead and taking it to the underworld jupiter expands anything it touches so whether you're you know touching multi-millions of you know you know, abundance and love and everything you've ever wanted, Jupiter will expand that. But if Jupiter is having this conversation with two deconstructors, Jupiter is also going to expand that conversation and take it from the micro to the macro. It's very rare, astrologically speaking, to have all three of these energies in the exact same place at the exact same time for the length of time we've had them because of how slow they move through the sky. Having them all in the same place at the same time for this prolonged period of time. See how this was February. We started the year this way. And now we're all the way in October and the energies haven't moved much. Astrologically speaking, this is what's causing that pressure cooker kind of energy. Capricorn rules structure, banks, institutions, government, 
work, work ethic, and growth by our own hand, our own efforts. However, this deconstructive energy has been revealing all year what is it that we have invested our efforts in that no longer serves the truth of who we really are? What's being, what it feels like is being taken away from us is actually here to liberate us. So that's kind of the big headline here, that what feels like is getting taken away is here to liberate. And part of the way the liberation work is going down is through all of the massive triggers we're feeling and experiencing as we're being made to sit still. Whoo, no distractions. <laughs> heavy, isn't it? That's really, really heavy. So yeah. given all these intense energies that are just lingering this way, how, how will we be feeling this? What are the kind of pressures we'll be feeling upon our person as a result of them being kind of present in the field at the moment? Mm -hmm. So there's been a brewing energy that um, has really come to surface in these last uh, two months. And that's the transiting energy of Mars through the sign of Aries. And this has what's allowed it to start to get extremely personal. Aries is the sign of the self. And with Mars, all of our outward projected energy, our ambition, drive, goals, squaring, squares our harsh angles, difficult angles, angles of transformation and the motivation to change, squaring this ending energy, there is a bit of a ratcheting up of personal triggers to our sense of self. There's a sense of all of this stuff going on out here in the macro, while all of this internal brewing and bubbling up is now starting to formulate and show us all of our wounds, all of our pain, anything unprocessed from the past, anything we haven't let go of that's stopping us from having the breakthrough we really want. So if you're feeling sensitive, upset, triggered, if you're noticing people closest to you are projecting, blaming, shaming, all of that is a sign that growth is imminent, that there is something here that's ready to change. We just need to identify what it is. That's so powerful and definitely resonant with, with you know, the, the readings I've done this week and the feedback I'm receiving from clients, and even my own experience. I think everyone's felt that pressure cooker energy um, and certainly the, the, the heavy trigger energy. So it's so fascinating to to see how that ties in with the, with the stars. It always does, doesn't it? It does. What, are, what have you seen with your clients? And I know you had kind of pulled some cards to share some resonant energies on your side. What are you noticing? Well, I think above all else is, and do you know, it's so interesting. My guides always describe um, surrender energy or moving towards that union stage or even just being in your power as, as learning to walk a tightrope. And if you think about it, if, if, however good we get at walking a tightrope, it still requires a, an element of focus and ongoing practice and skill to actually stay on it. And even the, the tightrope analogy, I think, serves as well that you can possibly stay on it 24-7. And so being aligned in our power is very much like learning to, to hold the balance, like on a tightrope, and recognizing that we're going to falter, we're going to wobble, we're going to fall off. And what I'm seeing regards that kind of energy is that even very advanced and evolved divine feminines and twin couples are really falling off that tightrope at the moment. It feels like their worlds are being rocked and they're being challenged to hold that alignment. Um, and it's more challenging than usual to do so. And that's been a consistent pattern. Now the, I think the, the fallback or fallout from that has been um, a, a dramatic increase in divine feminine runners. Um, a dramatic increase in union breakdowns so couples that were in union or appear to be coming in, in into union suddenly struggling. Um, we've also seen quite a high degree of separation within the, the, the kind of twin flames that are still in the earlier stages of the journey anyway. So there seems to be a lot of discord, a lot of conflict and a lot of intense triggering, creating a lot of runner chaser energies that perhaps weren't there before. Um, the cards 
I mean, I, obviously I didn't look at this new moon in Pisces, new moon, full moon in Aries thing until you brought it up today. And it's so interesting to me how, again, it ties in. We can see for the new moon in Pisces, we've got judgment in reverse, the queen of wands in reverse, and three of wands in reverse. So those are the energies of awakening, power, and fulfillment all blocked. And this is what re has really stood out for me, that a lot of divine feminines that have been really far ahead in their journey are suddenly feeling like that forward momentum is, is kind of ground to a standstill and a lot of core older wounds that need to be addressed again have rushed to the surface. And so it feels like the energy of just as you thought you were getting somewhere, the brakes are on. Whereas this full moon in Aries does feel like a kind of difficult and challenging step forward. It's taking responsibility again, coming out of the shadows. And with this page of cups energy, allowing yourself to revisit that kind of the innocence, the stress-free peace and joyous state that you were in before. But, you know, we've also got the three of swords here. And this is always um, a card of intense grieving and sorrow. And so it does feel like me that this is the end of a painful cycle. And it does say on this full moon in airy cards, that a, a fiery climax is approaching. Now we've got to remember as well that fire is purifying. You know, it's, it's all about burning away what no longer serves us. And it reminds me of that Scorpio energy rising and you know, the, the rising of the Phoenix coming out of the dark. So I do feel like it has been a rite of passage for a lot of us that we needed to put the brakes on and slow down and revisit some of that older wounding before we were really able to, to start moving forward. And for these cards to come up here, it feels like that's very much still in motion, like still in transit for me. Does that kind of match with the, the stars, do you think? Totally. Because when I, I'm going to show the chart again, when we look at the placement for divine masculine this year, that's that red one, Jupiter. And we look at the placement for divine feminine this year, that's that blue one, um, Juno. When we look at their placement this year, they've been in what's called a square for 11 months. And a square, the 90 degree angle they're facing directions that have nothing to do with one another. She was facing self and all of her self stuff, including Chiron and her old wounds and between herself and her relationship. He was facing his emotions and family, structure and work, and working through the energies of, okay, how did what is what I built truly a reflection of who I am? And she's looking at the energies of, is who I'm being in this connection truly and authentically a representative of my divine incarnate? Or am I somehow cheating myself or being less than that by holding on to older codependent patterns or patterns of imbalance that don't allow me to be authentically connected, that only allow me to be you know, sort of superficially connected? Have I been focus over-focusing on a 3D romantic union, but then shaving off parts of myself in order to achieve and attain it? Whereas he's having this conversation of, have I been over-focusing on 3D world attainment and neglecting my emotional and spiritual reality? Necessary work, mirroring work, not work that can easily be done side by side. That's absolutely astoundingly accurate according to what I've heard. You, you guys, if you're listening and this is resonating for you, please do let us know down in the comments. It's always so useful and so interesting to get your feedback. Um, I think it's just so reaffirming and comforting for all concerned as well. When we notice that these shifts are happening, not just for us, and it's like, oh, okay, I don't feel so crazy now, you know? Yeah. It's really, it's, it really is so helpful. Um, I guess now... The, this energy it, shifts. Can we look yeah. at our heads? Yeah. I think what, what, what do we do to help it shift and to help us move through it with more grace? Yeah, um, I love that. And more okay. dignity. So I'm going to use... <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've pulled out the Starseed Oracle, which is the Rebecca Campbell deck. Love this deck, but I've not really used it yet, but it felt appropriate today. So we've got Surrender to the Sweetness. That's Venus Energy, Pleasure, Joy, Make Love to Life. And I'm going to get a couple more. We've got higher earth, longing for home, homesick for the stars, and you are not alone. Isolation, physical connection, and community. 
So, I mean, Venus energy is just love, isn't it? I think that connects really beautifully with the, 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 the principal lessons of this journey. You know, it's to embody that, that divine feminine flow of unconditional love that, you know, always resides within us. It's described here as pleasure, joy, and making love to life. And I think this is always the goal. You know, when we talk about that tightrope, when we're on it and we're balanced, we feel our best. We feel so happy and joyful and peaceful in life. And I think this is reminding you that even in all of this chaos, you can always elevate yourself above that. You can buy yourself that respite just by dedicating some time and commitment. And it does say here, longing for home, you know, homesick for the stars, which for me is connecting to that, that truth of who we are. That is who we really are. That's when we're really home. We look for home outside of us. We look for it in others, <coughs> we look for it in people and places, but in truth it's in us. And you know, this is the, what you're longing for so much is in you and that you're not alone, you know, isolation, physical connection and community. So th those are such contradictory Keywords as well, aren't they? I think really um, relevant to the, the journey we're all taking during this pandemic as well, that many of us are physically isolated or disconnected. But there's a community here that is asking you to reach out, you know, to connect with others, to find um, peace and comfort in that, that un mutual understanding. Um, I always say, if you've got no one to talk about on this journey, that you'll find so many people in my Facebook group it's just a networking group for twins and ascending souls. You don't have to be a twin to be in there. But if you're on this journey of awakening and ascension and all the rest of it, and you're experiencing any kind of spiritual relationship, it's really helpful to have people to talk to that actually understand what you're going through. Because as we all know, the perception of the, the unawakened muggle population can be really a struggle when you're looking for guidance <laughs> or support, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally totally thank you for sharing that um, what are you seeing in terms of the guidance and the stars well um we have a little ways to go before the energies fully break so i just want to pull a couple of key dates so that you all can know when they break the first one was this new this full moon in aries in this full moon in aries the divine feminine energy fully left the sign she had been in for the last 11 months and that was libra a sign of balance a sign of you know peace and you know, equilibrium. What's interesting is that Venus, and you pulled that Venusian energy, Venus is actually the ruling uh, planet of Libra. And so she's just making her way out of this energy where she's been exploring how to be in balance with herself while also still being connected. As she leaves this sign, she's going to take a passage through the sign of Scorpio, which is about shadow also our fears, but also about alchemy, because it's when we really confront those fears, we truly have the opportunity to change. She that pops out here soul. in the sign of Sagittarius on the solstice. And so on that solstice date, 1221, she pops into the sign of truth, faith, hope, and optimism. But it's that and before she gets there, she has to go through confronting what she's afraid to let go of in order to have the freedom to live in her truth. And so there's this short passageway where we're looking for the last time, like, okay, this is what I'm going to, this is the price of what I'm going to have to let go of in order to get what it is I say I want and what it is I want to manifest. Because Sagittarius is a big, Sagittarius and Capricorn are two of the signs of massive manifestation. So the divine masculine, on the other hand, has been on a very different journey. He's met up with Pluto twice this year, Pluto, Lord of the Underworld. And he's going to meet up with him one more time before that solstice, solstice gateway. He'll meet up with Lord of the Underworld around the 11th, 11-11. Um, at least did I have to that? Yeah, I think so. Let me just go out to 1111 to confirm. We get to, or is it, it could be the 30th. Let me just see, because there's something specific about 1111, and I want to show you guys that. Yeah, here we are, 1111, both Pluto and Jupiter at 22 degrees Capricorn, final meetup of the year. Once he has that final meetup of the year, the certainty about what needs to be released in order to have a more authentic life will be solidified. And then once we get out here, 
to the solstice gateway. There he is, popped right into the sign of the new, the next evolution technology, Aquarius. He appears here with Saturn, so there's a grounded optimism as opposed to flyaway optimism. And then here's the divine feminine here at the first degree of Sagittarius. And for the first time in almost a year, the two of them are harmoniously placed to one another and it's an opportunity for regaining lost ground but it's the ground that was lost from building sand castles in the sky it was the ground that we gained from being inauthentic this passage of 2020 forced us into authenticity in such a way that now we can build something real in the next chapter that's so cool i love that and so in real terms i mean i know a lot of us are anxious about this last quarter of 2020 because astrologically it was always predicted to be a really rough year wasn't it yeah tumultuous yeah. tumultuous i mean astrologers have been talking about this year for the last decade at least and we've still got two two blue moon no a blue moon and a full moon coming up pretty much back to back and two more eclipses am i right mm -hmm. yep we have a few more eclipses as well so i think what we're seeing here even though it's a rough ride the overall message seems to be trust the energy it's 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 creating growth where previously we didn't have the, the clarity to truly be authentic in how we're presenting in our connections. Does that feel right to you? Yeah. And I think we, we were as authentic as we were able to be with the structure of life as it was. All of the hurriedness and disconnectedness and dissociation and distraction, we were as connected as that kind of life would allow. This year forced us into deeper connection with self. And within that, we saw where those disconnections with self were so that we could cultivate more authentic connection with self, which can only breed more authentic connection with counterpart. That makes so much sense. It is just, oh, we've just got to see it through. It's always easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. It can so, be difficult to get through. Let's talk about what we can get through. Because I know that for me, one of the things that, that helps me the most is actually focusing on my spiritual growth and journey. Sometimes, you know, it's not about not facing the heavy stuff, but actually giving yourself time to, to progress around things that are enjoyable as well as grow, growing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so this leads me on to your class because I've been checking it out. And I know it starts this week. You've started Star School. And I think understanding astrology and especially these energy is so impactful when we're really in the thick of it like we are now. So can, can you tell me a bit more about your Star School and how this is going to kind of help us, I guess, build more awareness around all this crazy energy? Yeah, totally. So <clears throat> this week on October 7th, I'm opening up a class called Star School. And Star School is your opportunity to put the power of understanding the stars in your own hands, in your divine connection. While it doesn't necessarily prepare you to become an astrologer, it does allow you to deepen your understanding and awareness of yourself and your divine counterpart and the energies flowing between the two of you so that you can move into ease, peace, and allowance with what's going on instead of panicking and then resisting and then getting dragged by the energies. So over at kmoonastro.com, you can click Star School Sign Up Now, and then you get to have the opportunity to learn astrology from a perspective of freedom and choice. There's a branch of astrology called determinism or fatalism, where people understand the stars to rule your destiny and you have no choice in the matter. That is the exact opposite of how I read. I read from a perspective of freedom and choice so that you have the opportunity to understand, here's what the energies are. You have a choice. How are you going to work with them? And in star school, 
Astro Basics and Astrology for Twin Flames 101 and 201, you have the opportunity to learn this information over a four-week course if you just take one or if you take them both over eight weeks so that you can deepen your understanding and awareness of these energies and start to work with them to get the best out of them instead of the worst. I'm sure many of you have seen on YouTube, on Instagram during this lockdown year, there are plenty of people who have still moved, gotten married, had children, created the business they wanted, and they're thriving in this energy. People who are thriving understand how to work with the energies. They may not know astrology, but they do know how to work with the energies as they present, and Star School teaches you how to do that. 101 is Astro Basics, and it gives you the basic understanding if you're new to looking at charts you've never seen them before it looks like absolute gobbledygook to you if you're new astro basics is where you want to begin but if you're also advanced the workshop layout of 101 gives you a workbook to work through to better understand your divine counterpart so if you've been struggling with miscommunication mistrust failed opportunities to connect it, working through the workbook in 101 for your divine counterpart's astrolo astrological chart will better help you understand here's who they are, here's why they are the way they are, here's what they're dealing with in life right now, and here's how you can be a better support. In 201, we take it deeper. In 201, we start to go into the seasons of your connection, the way the two of you are pair bonded together. We look to, we look to understand the patterns of challenge and ease between the two of you so that you can stop bringing out the worst in each other and you can start being mutual support no matter what stage of union or pre-union you happen to be in. The 201 starts in November and you're welcome to join now because we will be closing the doors very soon here to get the opportunity to sign up for both. So I highly recommend doing both if you're in a divine connection because they'll help you understand who you are and who they are and why you are the way you are and then start to look at, okay, here's how we work together. That's so, so powerful and so relevant. And do you know what I love about how you've structured this is that you're not just teaching us the basics of astrology and how to read our charts, but that you're supporting us in looking at it in a broader way to understand the synastry between any spiritual relationship ring, right? It doesn't just have to be twins from what I understand. That's correct. Doesn't have to just be twins because as you know, Charlotte, from you, what you do and in your work, as you know, whether you're a twin, whether it's a false twin or ascension partner or karmic or soulmate, when love has become your spiritual teacher, you're, and you're ignited by divine love as your learning path, the energies can present in the same way. Yeah, I would agree with that. So that's powerful. This is going to help you unravel those energies and, as you say, work with them. And remind me, because I'm pretty sure you said something about a cheeky little offer or discount for my end. Um, my subscribers or was it a giveaway i can't remember we have scholarships for your subscribers so oh, amazing yeah so i have three spots for um subscribers for from uh Happy Twins, 11, 11, three scholarship spots. And for those of you who are just like, I just need to get in on this now, scholarship or no scholarship, just go to kmoonastro.com. You can click on classes and then go straight here to Star School or at the bottom of the homepage, you'll see Star School. And then there, for those of you who are like, I love winning things. I want to see if I win. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an opportunity for you to um, check out Star School at a full scholarship. So there are three scholarships scholarship spots for uh, viewers and subscribers of Happy Twins 1111. So I want to tell you how to get in on that now. What you want to do is you want to go to this page. I'll show you. Here we go. You want to go to bit.ly slash star school, but you have to put it in all caps, star school bit.ly slash star school in all caps. Put in your name, put in your email, 
put in happy twins 11 11 here and then there's a question that asks you what have you learned from listening to charlotte many of you have been long time subscribers of this channel and charlotte goes above and beyond in her readings to provide insight and information for about personal growth and awareness I want to hear what have you learned from Charlotte over all these times you've watched her and in 24 hours from this live broadcast, I will be picking a winner. So what you need to do to find out if you've won, make sure you've got the correct email in here. First of all, secondly, subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting winners over at K moon and I'll also be emailing you directly so you can find out if you've won. But you've got 24 hours, so if you know you want to try to win, you've gotta submit before 24 hours from this live video, because after 24 hours from this live video, I'll be pulling Charlotte's name from this list, and I won't be taking any more entries from Happy Twins. So if you wanna get in, you have to do it now. Oh, thank you so much. That is so super generous of you. And do you know what I love about stuff like this is the universe will find the people that need it the most. And that's, I love that. That's the prayer I say every time I pull for new winners. I'm like, okay, universe, I want you to pull forward the name that is most ready to receive this information and most able to make use of it at this time in their life for their highest good. So I have a little random name picker. I don't pick the names. Google picks them for me. <laughs> and I trust the universe to show me the way to the person who needs it most. I love that. So it could be one of you happy souls. Don't forget to sign up and you can always rewind the video if you need to look at that link again. And it'll also okay. be in the description box. I'll give you a way to people to access it in the description box. Fabulous. Yeah, we'll post all of that information down below. And please do comment today and let us know because we love doing these collabs, but it's so lovely to get feedback from you into how you found them useful. If you've got any other insights or observations from the conversation we had, we would love to hear from you. And before I leave today, just a quick reminder, Kay, how can people book a reading with you and find your YouTube channel? Yeah, so <clears throat> you can find me over on YouTube at K Moon, um, K space moon, pretty straightforward. And then if you'd like to book a reading or if you'd like to enroll in star school, which is really kind of the only option at this point, only because um, readings have been sold out for quite some time. Um, you can come on over to kmoonastro.com go down here to star school and sign up. That is the fastest way to put the power of the stars in your own hands with me. I love that. Thank you so much. And you guys, I will be back soon again, posting more normal video content. At the moment, I'm still a bit low on internet, but I've just started recording again and aim to start uploading some readings by the end of this week. But for those of you that are still interested in getting a private reading or checking out my classes, please do visit my website, happysouls1111.com. Now, I am opening my diary at the moment roughly every two weeks for a few hours here and there. So make sure you're on my subscriber list because that's where I will send the updates to as soon as I open slots in my diary and then you'll be the first to know. So watch this space. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And Kay, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lots of love. Happy souls. Bye. Okay.